the human circulatory system. Perhaps one of the most complicated and efficient tools of the body, this one system is what supplies cells with the very nutrients it needs to survive. Without it, life would be a mere figment of the imagination. But sometimes, things can go wrong. So yeah, man, we can make pretty good. Ah! 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 Oh my gosh! Diseases of the circulatory system are a unique breed. Unlike problems of the skeletal or nervous systems, circulatory diseases have the capability to kill you in a matter of moments. They have large ranges of power and speed, can be microscopic in size, but have enormous lethality. But before you can learn about the different diseases, you need to know a little bit about how the circulatory system works. First, let's talk about blood pressure. When the heart contracts, it puts pressure on the walls of the blood vessels. This is good because it keeps the blood flowing throughout the body. Blood pressure is regulated by the body through a series of receptors. These receptors send messages to the brain, which then releases something called a neurotransmitter that tells the muscles of the blood vessel walls to either relax or contract in order to lower or raise blood pressure respectively. The kidneys do the same thing. The kidneys remove water from the blood, and the neurotransmitters tell the kidneys to remove more or less water to affect blood pressure. It is possible for doctors to measure blood pressure by using a tool called a sphygmometer. This tool stops blood flow, then releases its grip and measures how much pressure is then put on the artery. The results are two numbers, the top one being the systolic pressure number, and the bottom being the diastolic pressure number. The typical reading for an adult is 120 over 80. Remember how having blood pressure is a good thing? In certain cases, this no longer becomes true. High blood pressure, or hypertension, is where blood pressure is chronically too high and too much pressure is being exerted onto the blood vessel walls. Hypertension weakens and damages the heart and dramatically increases the chance of other problems occurring. Next on our list of potential problems is stroke. First, a chunk of fatty deposit called plaque builds up in an artery, which is a condition called atherosclerosis. This chunk breaks off of the artery and then travels to a blood vessel in the brain and blocks it. This stops blood flow from the small area to most of the brain, and is devastating to the now oxygen-deprived brain cells, causing them to shut down. At best, a stroke can have little to no effect on any body functions, but more often than not, a stroke can partially or fully paralyze a person or result in death. But this major problem seems a little remote when compared with the last disease on our list. That's right, it's a heart attack. The number one killer of Americans, the heart attack shares the same roots as a stroke. It starts when atherosclerosis occurs in a cardiac artery and then fully blocks the flow of blood through that artery. The surrounding heart tissue begins to suffocate and as more and more tissue dies, the heartbeat becomes erratic and eventually stops. This happens rather quickly, so it's good to know some warning signs of an impending heart attack, such as nausea, shortness of breath, and chest pain. Like most diseases, it's easier to prevent circulatory problems than to cure them. You can do this by 1. Eat healthy. Instead of eating frivolously. <laughs> 2. Get up out of that chair and score some three-pointers. Be sure not to overexert yourself. And three, don't smoke. This is one of the worst possible things for your health. Good to bed. I don't know, man. Now that you know all about the circulatory problems, go out and help your fellow humans in the fight against heart disease and stroke.